Hey, 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 Clarissa Banner here bringing you another review. Um, this one of, is of Powder Necklace, which came out years ago. Um, it's by Ghanaian American author Nana Ikwa Bru Hammond, who I recently um, interviewed on a podcast. It's um, the Sapropods and Life podcast, episode um, five. Check that out. It's a really good podcast where we're talking about everything um, in the publishing, about the publishing industry, and including the question whether or not, you know, you should be labeled an African writer if you're African, or should you be labeled an African uh, writer if you write about Africa? Who is entitled or who is allowed to be called an African writer? Um, and that's a really good question that comes up in the literary circles all the time. And we talk about that some. So check out that podcast. But I'd like to talk about her book, um, Powder Necklace, which is a really, really good um, book, uh, a coming of age novel. Um, and it's a really good uh, set, um, entry into. Um, African lit. It talks about a girl who goes from being born and raised in London and then all of a sudden her mom ships her off to Ghana to go live there, um, which was supposed to be a short stint but ended up being, um, you know, six months uh, vacation. She, her mom told her she was going there for vacation, ended up being a six month stay where she had to go to boarding school in Ghana and experience a whole nother life. Um, and it was just a really vivid description of what it's like to to be foreign someplace that she's supposed to be familiar with. She was very foreign in the country of her mother's birth. Um, everyone looked like her, but she couldn't speak the language. She didn't understand them. And she also had this chip on her shoulder because she felt like she was better than, than other people there. And um, it was a very humbling experience, to say the least. And um, she leaves Ghana, comes back to England um, to meet her mother and her mother's new boyfriend. And of course, there's a roller coaster of emotions there. And after a while, that's not working. And so her mom sends her to the US, the America to come with her father and his new family. It's just a really, really good story of what it's like to be jostled around, or what it's like to feel other. Um, in different places and what it's like to come of age as someone as a as as, as a as someone who's bicultural someone who has a dual identity here's a passage that really stuck out to me because it talked about the superiority inferiority complex that plague africans for some odd reason that's entrenched in colonization it's entrenched in this feeling that uh, foreign is better everything good comes from abroad and um, so she had this, like I was saying, she had the superiority complex being there. And, but then there were some Ghanaian girls in her boarding school who were like, look, you're no better than we are. And were envious of, um, Layla. Layla is the protagonist in the story. And here is a really good passage where, um, she's starting boarding school and at this boarding school, all students have to have their hair cut. And so she decided to go to the boarding school with her thick, beautiful hair to show that she was a brony. A brony is um, a foreigner. And, um, you know, and it was a humbling experience to have it, ha to have it have to be cut off. Here we go. I started to unravel each braid. Sister Shiaki and the rest of my roommates watched, many of them smirking as I lovingly detangled hair that would be chopped off. Oh, this thick hair has to be cut, Ivy mourned with me. When I was done, I shook out my hair like the brony Everyone kept calling me. The crippled waves rushed, rushing my shoulders. I wanted them to see. I wanted them to know that even when my hair was short like theirs, I was a brony or whatever else they wanted to call me. I was different from them. I was better. I took my seat on the bucket and sat with my back straight, my head high as Sister Shiaki started to cut. But when I heard the first heavy slice of the scissors and saw my hair float to the floor, I cr started to cry for more than the hair I was losing. I would look like a maid. I would look like them. So that was a passage that I asked Naneku about on the podcast, and we talked a little bit about that, um, and we delved into um, why she felt, you know, superior, why she felt better than um, some of the kids that she was there with. And we concluded um, that, you know, it, ha it has a lot to do with how our parents here abroad, you know, describe Africa. A lot of times they don't describe home as a place where we want to go to. It's usually passed off and insult. Oh, if you don't do this, I'm going to send you back home. Or if you mess up, you're going to be sent back home. And home becomes almost like a place of um, punishment, a place of, of terror. And so you never want to go back. You never want to be relegated to this place to the end of the earth. And so um, that feeds into this 
feeling that just because you're born or raised abroad, you know, you are better than people who have than people who were born and raised on the continent. So I would highly recommend this book. It's a really good read, a really easy read. Um, you can check it out from your library or purchase it on Amazon. The link in the show note in, in the pot in the post um, links straight to Amazon where you can purchase it. Um, and again, books. it's on the top. my top 100 books to read. If you haven't seen that list, check that out on the blog as well. This AfropolitanLife.com. And before I leave, I wanted to show you guys my beautiful necklace from Books for Elmina, which is an organization that I'm a huge fan of. It's an organization that sells jewelry and headscarves. Each necklace bought, each headscarf bought, goes to buying a book um, for a library that's going to be built in Elmina, my hometown. Woo -woo. Um, so yeah, go ahead and buy those. Cop that, you know. Copy yourself a nice little necklace. They're beautiful. Um, if you go to foramina.bigcartel.com, you can check out the beautiful necklaces um, and headscarves there. They're just amazing. And like one statement pieces you've never seen before um, that you'll definitely love at price points you can definitely appreciate. Um, once again, check out foramina.bigcartel.com. Go to www.thisapropolitanlife.com for more books and recommendations on the blog. And go to iTunes, subscribe to our podcast, This Afropods and Life Podcast. We talk any and everything. It's intelligent conversation and thoughtful commentary with Africans across and throughout the diaspora. Thank you.